This is Boxing Ticket, and I were here at the warehouse in the Red Cow. Delighted to be joined by victorious Matthew Tyndall. I missed you obviously last time, obviously moving to 4-0. I missed your fight result tonight, obviously in terms of obviously footage to put online. But obviously I couldn't go two cards back to back without getting an interview with you. Obviously, since your debut in November, obviously you're complaining, obviously you didn't want the rounds or anything else. You've now won four consecutive fights. Very good final experience. Ah, hundred percent. That lad was a survivor, a mover, and he, he had good movement. Like he, you could tell he was probably a good amateur in there. Do you know what I mean? And uh, I, I, I was getting the, I was trying to figure him out, and I did. I, I won every round well, but um, I'm happy with that. It's a, it brought out a different kind of style that I had to use compared to the last fight. The last fight I had to move a bit. This fight I had to go on him. So them two fights alone have brought out two complete different styles of me, and I'm delighted with that because. Whatever happens next, if something like that happens in a fight, I'll be able to switch it real quick to the so I'm happy with how that went. I think sometimes when people see people starting off, obviously you use Shane McConnell probably as an example, there he's 2-0 with two stoppages, but what is he learning from some of them fights? You're getting the rounds and you know, stoppage can come later on in the career. Like You want sometimes people to think that you're, a, that you're not a puncher and everything else, and then you can shock them in a fight. Like a, probably a good example, Josh Warrington. Obviously Josh Warrington, quite a lot of his fights, I think when he fought Carl Front, I think he had five or six stoppages. Drop Carl and him, he's like, Craigie, what's going on here? So, like, you're happy just to keep banking rounds? That's all it is. Like, what's the point going in from my. F- Imagine I was five and out right now with five first round knockouts. I'd be only having. I wouldn't even have a six rounder if that's the case. Shout at me. I've had two six rounders in a row and then four, four, or two four rounders in a row. And then if obviously the first fight was a one round. But I'm learning so much off this. Even in the last round, say, when I have to dig deep. That's stuff that you don't learn in first round knockouts and all. So I'm always learning and I'm always looking to learn. And I'm never picking easy journeymen. I'm always picking the hardest. Like, you look at the, how many times they've been stopped. I'd say it's about five times in all the, every journeyman I've fought. I'd say you count on one hand with all them together. Like, and that's what I want. They're all tough men. So that's what I, I don't want to be in there knocking everyone out real quick. I want to be learning, I want to be taking shots, I want to be landing shots, I want I want the full feeling, you know what I mean, so mm-hmm. I'm delighted with how everything's gone. Obviously it's, it's hard to believe, like you're still so young, like obviously from making your debut to November, like when obviously when the conversation came with you and everything turning over, like did you think you'd be fighting five times within eight months? Do you know what it was, we, we said it to him and he said we can do that for you and I was kind of, like obviously I believe and I trust Jay. But five fights, nine months is a, like, how many people do that? Like, it's a lot. And um, I'm going to have more. Like, next month I could be in again, so that could be six and nine months. Um, like, I could have seven by the end of the year. Like, and um, I, I don't, be, I can't, it's hard to believe, do you know what I mean? But I'm happy with how it's all gone. Jay's sort of in that predicament, sort of, and I think he was, he was, he was looking at potentially maybe putting you in for a, a title fight in this, in this card, but I think he's sort of sometimes having to realise how young you are. Like, you're in no rush to obviously progress and everything else. We may have obviously mentioned this in an interview previously, but like, if Jay was to sort of say to you next, obviously, a Celtic title, you're obviously going to believe everything he says, but like, are you happy to see you out the rest of the year just building experience, or would you like to get into a title fight? Oh, if, if the title fight came from my next fight, I'd take down a heartbeat. Honestly, like I'd fight him, even like any type of fight I'd fight him. I'm not saying that being oh, I'd beat anyone. Do you know what I mean? I, I genuinely do believe in my own ability. When I'm fully fit, I don't think anyone could beat me. And um, yeah, if Jay offered me, I was we briefly talked about it for this, but I was away in Thailand four weeks ago, five weeks ago, and I had to come back get my way. Not my way wasn't bad, but I had to get everything right, get back fit and all. So we we're like maybe just give this a miss and get a good journey, man. And he was a good mover, like it's not like it was some lad that I'm gonna wipe out. So we took a good not chance but we took a good fight. And um, yeah, maybe the next one could be a bigger fight out of me. That's five fights obviously now here in the warehouse. Obviously the potential of the next card obviously in the national stadium. Like you get so familiar to this place. You probably have your exact spot picked out for every fight. You know obviously the routine and everything else. Like have you boxed in the national stadium before? Like obviously you're looking forward to obviously trying out new venues? Uh, the National Stadium used to be my second home. I won it nine All Ireland's there. Um, Dublin Championships as well used to be boxed there, and I won. I think I won seven or them or something. So I've li- I literally I say I fought more than ha- like it, but out of the nineties, nearly hundred amateur fights. I say I fought more than half them there. So 
I'm not. It won't be something new. I'll be. I'll be back home there. Uh, it's, it's something you've been familiar with, and obviously, you know. I guess sometimes it's good to mix it up. Obviously, you have a loyal fan base, or obviously that's grown and everything else. But you want to give them new venues. You want to give them different experiences. You're probably limited. There's so many tickets you can sell as well. So the National Stadium is going to give you an opportunity to get more people in there. It hasn't been so far. Yeah, and hopefully it is in the National Stadium next to be be good for all my fans. Well, if you know, fans to come out. Maybe you get more because maybe the, there's more seats there. The tickets could be cheaper, maybe. And I'll get double the people then because uh, I have a very loyal fan base there. They come to every fight, same numbers every time. They, it's not like they dip off. Every single person comes every time. And I appreciate them so much. You even heard when they come and I'm like, I say this after every fight, but they, they, they literally tear the, tear the roof down. Like they're, they're unbelievable. There's no, like, you're obviously getting used to them doing that as well, but like it's obviously it's a surprise sort of to you every time. It's sort of still as they are, the hair stand your arms. Like you, if they didn't do it, you probably you'd be disappointed. Yeah, that's it. Like and like when they when they call your man's name and you're just standing there, and then they call your name. There's no roar for him, and then you hear your name. All you hear, then all the pimple you out stand up on your arms. It gets you going for the fight. You know what I mean? You know you have people there. Just obviously when you finally leave it, obviously in your idol, obviously Katie Taylor. She's sort of, her last fight, obviously, the three arena got the belts back last year, but obviously she's going to be making history again, obviously, to rematch with Amanda Serrano, making 6.5 million US dollars, obviously, the fight, so it's going to be the biggest, grossing, obviously, female fight of all time. Like, I pretend she probably does deserve more, but it's breaking new ground, obviously, in the sport. Like, you probably couldn't be any prouder. Like, I know we spoke previously and said about potentially, obviously, uh, training in America and everything else, back with Wayne McCulloch. Like, would you like to get over to obviously see Katie's fight against Serrano? We're at the last one we were. Um, maybe, yeah, hopefully we can, but the, we're going over to Wymere. That's happening. Like, um, that's, I'm going to train with him f and see how we get on there. And uh, yeah, Katie's unbelievable. She is like, hopefully, I get a title shot and be the first male pro boxer from Bright to bring a title back and then be history there. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, like Joa, she's an inspiration no matter what she does. You know what I mean? She's the nicest person inside and outside the ring. So all I hope is I hope nothing but the best for her. She's the best. Uh, anything, you know what I mean? Anything she does, she turns to gold. Definitely. Well, look, obviously, congratulations. It was good to get the catch up, obviously, after after missing you from the last one. But congratulations once again, and no doubt we'll catch up with you very soon. Thank you very much. I'll see you, see you in the next show. <laughs> Cheers, Matthew. Thank you. Thanks.